Hey guys, Cube Hamster here, and welcome to a new Redstone video. Friday, I released the project that we've been working on for, I don't know, four to five weeks. And like, we were super hyped about it, and we were all super hyped to see all you guys be super hyped about it as well. Um, but in this video, I want to give a little bit of like uh, commentary on like how things work and how this uh, project came to be. Um, so we're now in the you know overworld and the tunnel bore is somewhere on the ground and we can see that it's turned off because the beacon is actually red. I think this is a very interesting way to indicate if a machine is running or not from a distance. Um, but let's take the elevator down and let's have a look at some of the mechanisms and talk a bit about like how this thing came to be. Um, so let's start it up and make this thing turn green, place a little note block sound. Uh, but yeah, like this project started, well, like started as a group four weeks ago, four to five weeks, something like that. Um, but a lot of work went into this beforehand. Um, this is a project that initially got started by Alex Yu, one of the uh, the people that's on the team. And he literally started like six months ago. Um, but like, he basically, he got stuck and he made a, or several designs for like Joe heads and such, um, like as a proof of concept, but he didn't have uh, a good working engine or like a, a self-returning flying machine to, to make this thing work. Um, and it's not been too long ago that I got contacted, that was actually several months back, by a, a YouTuber from Spain, uh, like a young, I think he's like 13 or something like that, uh, who said like, uh, I have a lot of cool stuff, you, like he gave me some examples, go, go check this out. Um, and one of the things that he showed me was this very interesting um, like two-way flying machine. Not exactly like this one, but like it, it had the, the sort of concept. And at the time when he showed that to me, it didn't really like tick the, the, like the possibilities because the, the way he had it set up, you couldn't really ride it and you couldn't really uh, attach anything to it. So I was like, eh. This not, does not seem very useful. Um, but then a couple months later, I, I don't know, I just kind of ticked and I contacted him again and we did a, a video together. Uh, I think if you search for simple two-way flying machine, you, you end up with this thing. Um, but that is uh, basically what triggered this whole thing because uh, it turns out that these, like this flying machine is super easily um, like manipulated and you can easily turn it back using several mechanisms and such. Um, and after that, I did a, a live stream where I wanted to turn this flying machine into a sort of self-returning flying machine, as in when it flies into a wall, uh, it automatically returns. And we had, I think at some point, we had like seven people coming up with like different designs and such. This is a ghost block, by the way, that happens. Um, but uh, yeah, started messing around and eventually someone had like the breakthrough where we had our first designed self, self-returning uh, flying machine. And that is what really got this thing going because if you have a self-returning flying machine, then, then you can initiate, like, initiate some sort of thing where you fly into a wall, you grab some blocks and then you fly back. Now, um, like I said, Alex was already working on this for the last six months and he had several designs for uh, drill heads that are kind of similar to this one, but not exactly the same. Um, and like those designs had a little bit of issues, uh, especially like with the whole returning and like updating part, but the like the foundation, the foundation was there. Um, so that's when I like things really got going and obviously invited Alex to, uh, we basically merged the projects in that aspect. And um, we, we've we managed to fix, or like I come, I come up with a design that would like properly update itself and manage to hook it up to uh, the engine that we created to uh, during the live stream. And that was like one of the first prototype videos that I released. And when, when that happened, um, 
you know, we started working more. Dico uh, was already involved at the time, and so was Mitchu. Um, but then at some point, uh, Peter Zhang got involved as well, and he actually, he, uh, I have like contact with him on Skype and with most other like Redstones, and he basically sent me an unlisted video of a design that he's been working on, uh, and it turned out that he already had a working drill design that could dig, you know, an infinite tunnel. Uh, but the way he had it set up is that it could not, it couldn't handle caves, and it also, like the way it was set up, would have been extremely, extremely difficult to uh, remove the blocks from the drill after it returned to a station. Like he was using command blocks in the video to remove it, but obviously you, you need to use some sort of uh, like redstone mechanism to remove all those blocks. Uh, but yeah, we kind of like uh, teamed up, and uh, he, you know, he did a lot of help on the project as well. Um, but uh, yeah, at some point after you know a couple of weeks, we finally had a a proper working design for the drill at which we made a new video of, where we literally had the thing fly into a wall and go back, and then we were also deleting it with command blocks. But the difference between this drill head and the one that Peter Zhang had. As seeing as this thing is so long, and as you can see, the blocks that are attached are so incredibly spaced out, uh, it makes it a lot easier for for us to to actually remove the uh, the blocks. Now it's funny that like how because we're using we're using the same two-way flying machine as the one that's in the engine in order to actually remove the uh, uh, the blocks, but we were like. We were basically stuck. So, okay, how are, how are we going to remove these blocks? We we already had like Deco came up with a system for the the front, but then for the stuff of the on the side, and someone I think jokingly kind of said like, you know, we could just use two-way flying machines, and then we were all like, you know, screw it, let's let's try let's try and actually use two-way flying machines to uh, to remove the blocks from the drill, and that turned out to be like the perfect solution for this problem and like it's so the, these flying machines so easily manipulated in if you just have an obsidian block somewhere or, or an immovable block that is already enough for it to automatically return like and, and go back to where it came from and that's kind of what I show, show in the uh, compact simple flying machine as well. Um, anyways, then we had a way of removing these blocks, and then like it was kind of a matter of then how are you going to transport the blocks to the um, you know to the wither cage, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, as these things fly in, I remembered that not long ago I did a sharing is caring episode uh, on a uh, very, very, very cool and simple uh, block conveyor system by Redstone Amos, um, which is what we have here. It's basically this like little module here, and we kind of manipulated that and manipulated it more. And the the way this thing unloads is basically imagine people leaving an airplane at the front. You know, first you have the people at the front of the plane leave, and then the ones after that, and then the ones after that, and the ones after that. That's kind of the the mechanism. And then at that point already, like the stuff at the front of the drill has already been removed. So that's, it's not exactly the same as leaving leaving a plane, but you, you get the idea. Um, then we had some tricky like removal here, where we needed to use a triple extender to move uh, a bunch of blocks into another one of these like conveyor systems. Um, but like all in all, what happens and what ends up happening is that um, all these blocks get transported, and you can kind of see it happening now, um, kind of like how the way smart pistons would work, and they end up in uh, this at uh, this system with the pink circuit. And here, there's basically um, whenever whenever like three blocks arrive here or at the second layer or the uh, third layer, uh, what will happen is a signal will go to the orange system here, like you see the three repeaters, and these send a signal to this dispenser, which has a bunch of snowballs, and I'm kind of hoping that we're going to get a, another load soon. I guess we have to wait a little bit 
for the next load of blocks to come in. But uh, this is a wither cage originally designed by Daniel, Daniel Coates. I'll put a link in the description to that. Um, and at first it wasn't 100% efficient. We didn't have all these hoppers here. And what would happen is blocks would fall at the edge or they would fall on the top of these like fence gates. And after five minutes they would despawn, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But what you see happening now uh, is so blocks getting moved in and the wither takes, not really, doesn't really take, well, it actually does take damage, uh, but it regenerates over time. But when it takes damage, it does the, you know, block destroying uh, animation. I'm hoping we're gonna get another one soon. There we go. So it gets hit by a snowball and it breaks the blocks. And these blocks get elected, get detected by the uh, hopper system. And there's apparently some comparators missing there. I don't know why. Uh, these lights are just to indicate they were here for the video. I actually highly recommend not having them around. Uh, then they go up this drop evader, which I showed in a very, very old sharing is carrying video, but it's still relevant. Like droppers are basically moving the items upward. Uh, after which they end up in a item sorter, which actually sorts all the different like block types in their appropriate uh, chests. And first, the first row they end up with is the, the like the top one. Let's see if we, we probably have a bunch of cobblestone now. Uh, we don't. Do we have a bunch of this stuff? Uh, no, it's apparently ending up at the bottom now. So we mine some blocks here and here. Did we get gold already? No. I don't think we've had anything else. Um, but yeah. So that is basically how this project came to be. And then, you know, there was a whole bunch of like timing stuff. And we have a... Uh, reset mechanism um, and what kind of happens is there I mean there are situations seeing as this thing is not it can't handle every situation there's very very specific cave configurations where it might get stuck um, there is obviously lava and water which might cause unintended block updates and extend pistons that are not supposed to be extended and then there is obsidian but the way this thing kind of has like an alarm system, whenever, uh, whenever no, like whenever it does a trip and it returns without any blocks, uh, that kind of changes the indicator to uh, orange, uh, which is something you can see, you know, from far away. And at that point, it means that a mechanic or a person has to go in and like fix the issue. Uh, the issue being either removing lava or water or moving some obsidian or maybe some gravel. It can actually handle certain gravel configurations. Um, it will probably still say that there's an issue though because it won't be returning with any blocks. Um, I think the main thing that kills this like drill is in the event where it removes a block in the back, kind of like in this top row, and as it moves back, a whole bunch of gravel falls down, like right in the middle of or on top of the engine. That is when there where <laughs> when there will be issues. Um, but for the most part, it, it should be kind of okay-ish. Um, and obviously, another drawback on this thing is that you can kind of calculate like how long it would take to make a uh, a tunnel that is you know x length. Um, and like how much time you would need for that. But if you want a, a tunnel that is twice as long, like disregarding the unloading sequence and the flying up to this point, like if you want a tunnel that is twice as long, it will it will take like, uh, like four times as long. So basically quadruple, it takes quadruple the time if you want a tunnel that's twice as long as another tunnel. Because the distance that this thing has to fly every time to pick up blocks just keeps getting longer and longer. Um, so, you know, it, at the max load that this thing carries is like 43 blocks. Uh, but probably at some point this thing is not going to become uh, super efficient. But the point is, though, like this is just a starting design. And I am, I am super convinced that, first of all, the drill can be faster. Like the engine we're using is slow. I'm pretty sure someone can up can come up with a faster self-returning flying machine design. And uh, second of all, like this drill is huge. It can probably be a lot shorter and the station can therefore also be a lot shorter. That also means that it will collect less blocks. 
but like I still see this as just uh, the start, like starting potential uh, of the project. And I don't know if like I personally will be like looking into more specific designs, but um, I don't think anytime soon because I have the uh, slime lock robot tournament coming up. But I'm pretty sure others will. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what, you know, what improvements people can come up with. So, yeah. I think I'll probably do a, um, a like, uh, sort of time lapse or, like, just a test to see, like, how, man, how fast this thing actually mines. Just mine for a couple hours and then, like, register how many blocks we've actually mined. Uh, but for the most part, I think this project, for me, is relatively done i don't know we'll see. we'll see unless something like really inspires me but i don't feel like improving this design is um to me this is already kind of done what would be interesting though and that's like that that would some be something that i'd be interesting in is if we could come come up with a system where this drill head has mined you know x amount of blocks and then we just shift the entire drill head i don't know four blocks to the left and then we repeat the process like doing something like that, that would be interesting. Especially seeing as these, you know, this unloading station can be a lot further to the left, seeing as we are we are actually using, uh, you know, flying machines to unload the blocks. And that's something that can possibly also be done at the front, where you don't actually have the, red, like you have the redstone really far to the left and right. Um, that does mean, like that obviously creates other issues though, because it means that the area that you actually need to ex excavate in order to build this station will be substantially bigger. But I don't know, it'd be something interesting. It would definitely be something interesting. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm just like, this is probably the coolest project I've been a part of and like working with uh, Dico and Alex and uh, Michu and Peter has been a lot of fun. And like also other people that showed up to help. And uh, who knows? Like. I'm, I'm looking forward to more collaboration in the in the future. Anyways, guys, so much for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then be sure to leave a like on the video. And uh, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.